Hey people, John V here from Phone Arena. I have the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7 in my hands, the uh, Verizon LTE version. But I run a couple different benchmark tests to see, of course, how the, ha the tablet handles most operations. Just by quickly looking at it here, it, ex it exhibits all the uh, usual things we find with the Honeycomb tablet. It runs pretty smoothly with a static wallpaper. You can tell just navigating across the home screen, the app panel. A little bit, a little bit of jerkiness every now and then, but it's not that bad at all. So let's take a look at some of the, some of the stuff here. You can tell just with the uh, various pinch gestures. Pretty smooth and, ins and instantaneous, so not a much of a problem in that area. It's powered by a dual core 1.4 gigahertz processor. It's coupled with one gigabyte of RAM, so that's uh, you know pretty much you know normal specs nowadays. It's not a uh, quad core processor or anything like that. And you notice just by bringing up the uh, widgets here, you do notice some some slowdown to it with its operation. So let's uh, test it out a little bit more. Let's uh, run the uh, live wallpaper. It's running Android 3.2 Honeycomb on top of, uh, looks like the TouchWiz interface, of course. Let's put a live wallpaper on. Let's set the uh, blue C1. See how it handles this. Now, normally, as with most uh, Honeycomb tablets, we notice a good amount of strain with uh, live wallpapers. And it's somewhat decent. You could definitely still see some evidence of, of sluggishness or choppiness with its movement. If we put it to portrait, it's a little bit more pronounced here. Yeah, you definitely know it's not as tight with its uh, instantaneous response here, and you can tell it just uh, a little bit of delay too at times. But um, you know that's typical of any honeycomb tablet, with, which uh, we've seen in the past. Let's bring it back to a static wallpaper now. And then we'll run the first test here, which is Quadrant, and then we'll just go from there. So let's take a look. Let's, let's load up Quadrant here. Now we've ran it already quite a few times, and we have to say, you know, it p puts up really good scores. But again, you know, benchmark scores are one thing, and actual performance is another. Uh, but if we just uh, take a note of uh, the numbers, it's the uh, results it's able to produce. It's roughly around 3,500 on Quadrant, which is pretty respectable. Easily putting in lines with uh, great devices like the Samsung Galaxy S2, the Galaxy Nexus, Galaxy Note. Um, some of the uh, you know some of the great devices in the past, uh, but not quite in the same level as a quad core device such as the Asus Transformer Prime. And we'll quickly show you that here as it's loading up the the uh, this uh, test. Now, this is taking a little bit of time. Let's see if it's gonna come out give us a pretty decent score. So here's, here's the first graphical test that's running. Quickly show you. This one here is running around 60 frames per second, roughly 55 to 60. Still pretty smooth. You could tell with its movements. And it's pretty consistent. You know, it's moving up towards 60 frames per second at times. This next one here, uh, it's hard to say, it doesn't really show it. 41 frames per second. So not quite as, you know, not at the 60 frames per second mark, but. And this last one. It's like 40 frames per second too. Not the smoothest we've seen on a on a tablet or any device out there, but still decent enough. Let's see what it puts out puts out this time. So with this test, it put up a, a pretty good score, 39.50 on Quadrant. So that's really remarkable. So uh, you know it's still a pretty fast processor, but you know it all ultimately comes down to just the actual uh, you know performance out of the uh, box with the its normal operation. So let's uh, show you some other things here. We ran uh, the Antutu benchmark test here. Quickly show you the results and then we'll see if we could get some other uh, benchmarks here. So with Antutu, it gave it a total score of 6382. So still not bad at all. And we put that in the score chart. It actually ranks, you know, pretty, it's up there, but nothing groundbreaking. So we're here at 6382, a little bit on par with the Galaxy Nexus, Galaxy Note, still lagging behind the uh, the Transformer Prime, which is again still up there in terms of benchmark scores. And the last thing we're going to show you here, actually, we'll show you a few more things here if we can. Let's run Lint Pack, run a multi thread, show you what it puts out. Usually takes three seconds, yeah. 82.276 mega flops takes approximately 2.05 seconds, so not that bad at all. It's a really good score. And the last test we'll show you here, guys, is just NeoCore. See what it runs uh, pretty much close around the 5859. That's what we typically see out of most high-end devices. 
So we'll, we'll just run this last test and show you what what's able to get. So just by looking at these graphics here, it's really nice, smooth, different effects, smoke effects, all the lighting looks pretty, pretty nice. So here we go, it should be finishing up here. There you have it, just as, as we said, 58 frames per second on the average, still nice, you know, pretty, pretty much uh, expected with this type of device. So there you go. So there you go, guys. That's pretty much it with the benchmark test for the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7.7 .7 LTE for Verizon. If you want to learn more about this device, you can check out our website, PhoneArena.com. This is John V. Thanks for watching.